Star 105.7 West Michigan's Christmas Station. It's going to be stuck in my head all week. Anybody, ask me anything and I will reply, hidden, hidden in a whisper. Now look at this one. She has my hairdo. I love her. Veiled reflection. Look at that. I like her collar. You know, I've always thought if you want to be on the cover of a romance novel, you have to have good hair and a high collar and somebody who looks like Tom Selleck. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in settings of silver. What does that mean? A, a word fitly, what does fitly mean? I don't know what that means. Oh, you are so adorable. You look like Desi. <laughs> apples of gold in settings of silver. Well, what good is an apple if it's in gold? Is that the whole point? I, I don't have any room for you. Two years ago, I adopted a a little bear on a wreath that looked just like you. So I don't have any room for you, but you're gonna be okay. You're only five dollars. Somebody's gonna adopt you, buddy. How many smiles does it take to be happy? How many times do you have to feel lonely before you get the chance to meet someone? Before you get to meet someone like you? many songs can you write about heartbreak how to go on when you're fed up with mistakes maybe i just found the answers maybe i just found the answers in you come give me all your love i want you to know we can make Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. And I so hope you had a good Thanksgiving. I, I know some of you are experiencing your very first Thanksgiving alone and you were truly on my mind that whole day. I never post on the community section of YouTube, but for some reason I thought I'm going to post my Thanksgiving Day song that I wrote in the community tab. And I thought, well, maybe four or five of you would find that. And I couldn't believe it. Hundreds and hundreds of you went there. And I was so touched. And so we kind of got to wish each other a very happy Thanksgiving Day live. And you got to see my very first video. Oh, boy, that was rough. But, right, it's the thought that counts. And it was so fun to see my old doggy Cooper and... Boy, I was skinny. I loved seeing that. <laughs> but anyway, it was very touching. You know, to this day, I cannot sing that song all the way through without tearing up. So even after all these years, those lyrics are part of me. I don't know about you, but if I see one more video about Black Friday sales, I'm going to scream. <laughs> so I thought what we would do today because it's kind of a holiday week, I thought I would just sit down and answer the questions that some of you ask me every single day. And I picked out the most intimate ones, the ones that will be the hardest for me to answer. And they're, they're not just going to be about me. They're going to be about all of us. There's something magical about Christmas, and it reminds me, we never know what can happen tomorrow. So we might as well just hang in there. I want to make sure that you know that I do not equate a personal spicy question with something negative. I do not. You know, I'm just sitting here and I am filming my life. And if you have something to say or something you want to know, you should be able to say that without, you know, being made to feel like, well, you don't have a right to ask that or say that. So I, I like it that we're free here. I don't think a week goes by where somebody doesn't say, 
I don't care what you say or what you do or how big you smile. I think you're sad. Why are you so sad? And the truth is, I am not sad. Not every day is a good day, but every day that I live is an important day and a day that I learn and a day that I laugh and I have fun with Desi or my friends or you. But that doesn't take away the fact that many of you feel this way, that there's something about me that projects this kind of inner sadness. So I have to take that as something that is true to so many of you. My mom always used to say to me, you, you're always so far away. You, you, you're kind of mysterious and you're my own daughter. And I wonder if that doesn't have something to do with it, that maybe I'm just far away. We human beings are made up of all kinds of different emotions. We're sad, we're happy, we're concerned, we're worried, we're joyous. We're everything. And sometimes I think what you see in me might be a reflection of how you feel at that given time within yourself. Because I've always thought that this channel is not really about me, it's about us. I am a reflection of all of us here that are sharing a life experience. And are we happy all the time? No. Are we sad all the time? No. We just are. And the art of being is fabulous. Ah, give me a sexy look. <laughs> that's not sexy, that's give me a beer. <laughs> Second question is, do you budget your money and would you consider yourself a shopaholic? And first off, yes, I do budget my money. I don't think you can be on a platform like this and not budget your money because you are uh, getting compensated by, you know, at least a dozen different areas and you got to keep track of that. And I have to budget my money and I have little spreadsheets and I have fun with that. Now, the second part of that question is, am I a shopaholic? <laughs> You know, I don't actually know the technical definition of a shopaholic, but I do know that when I am very sad or having a bad day, I do not go out and shop or I don't sit at my computer and order a lot of new items. That does not soothe my soul. How often do you dust? And all those belongings that you have, you must have to dust every single day. Is it worth it? Yeah, I love to dust. I have loved to dust ever since I was a tiny, tiny little girl. My mama would give me a rag and some old English and just push me into the living room and I would polish that wood furniture until it would just shine. And she would come in and say, oh, that is beautiful beautiful, you know, and I just loved the praise, of course, but I just loved it. And to this day, you know, I have a glass dining room table, a glass coffee table, and I love to see it shine and I clean them every day and I enjoy it. That's relaxing to me. Maybe I shouldn't be admitting this, but when I can, you know, buff my wood tables and make them shine, to this day, I, I love it. So how often do I dust? Well, I probably will dust or, or shine up something every single day, but, but I love it. Do you like Christmas? Yes, I do. I like Christmas, I like winter, I like snow, I like jingle bells, uh, I like the reindeer. What's your I like, favorite reindeer? Uh, probably Francie. <laughs> Really? How about Rudolph? You don't like Rudolph? His nose is too bright. Who's your favorite reindeer? Anybody but Rudolph. Anybody 
but Rudolph. Oh no, why don't you like Rudolph? His nose shines too bright. Do you think we should talk about the elephant in the room? Look at these earrings. Aren't they pretty? This is from the Macy's Holiday Collection. Oh, they're so pretty, aren't they? Red for Christmas, for Valentine's Day, for my birthday, garnet. I don't know, I just love them. Anyway. Not a day goes by where some lovely lady doesn't ask me, where are you meeting these men that you're dating? <laughs> and I think, I love that question. It's so cute. 10 years ago, when I was 58, I joined a dating site and I met uh, two men on, you know, through the online service and I had a pretty serious relationship with both of them. So I found the experience to be very positive. Now at 68, I, I don't feel quite the same way about a dating site. I have been a little uneasy with the younger men that seem to be extremely aggressive with older women. Now maybe that's just me, but I would rather meet men now by just putting it out there with my group of friends that you know, I'm open to meet someone. This last man that I have been dating, I actually met when I was on a date with someone else. And he came up to me and he recognized me as being a woman that was in a band with his brother. And I thought that was so cute. So that was how I, I met him and he became a Facebook friend and... Um, so he's very nice and we have we have a good time. But that's how I I meet the gentleman friends that I date now. It's it's more based in reality and I have basically pulled back from all online uh, dating. On Sunday nights I always get all dressed up and I go to jazz night and I hardly ever have a date for jazz night. And I'm fine with that. I enjoy that. It, it's a lot of freedom and I can wear something kind of wild and, and I see my friends and, and it's really lovely. And I don't have a date at all, but I love it. But a question that you ask me a lot is, can a woman your age still be interested in romance and sex? And how does that work out for you? <laughs> and, and you know, that's a subject that women... You know, in my little community, they really don't talk a lot about that subject. And, and I, you know, I can see why. <laughs> I mean, it's a very personal uh, subject, but I think that if, if you love dating and you enjoy men or who, whoever you might be going out with, of course you're going to feel passionate. If you felt passionate at 20 or at 30, you're going to feel passionate at 60, 70, or, or beyond, I assume. But for me, I can't feel passionate or enjoy intimacy if I'm not in love. And I'm afraid with the men that I have dated, they're not willing to give me that extra time to fall in love with them. You know, after three or four dates, if I haven't invited them back to my bedroom, I, I can see the wheels turning and they're thinking, well, she's a dud. She's not very warm and, and affectionate. You know, I think I'll, I'll look elsewhere. I, I find that men are truly in a rush to get to the bedroom. And I cannot do that unless I feel love. I've always been this way. Sex was never something that was a recreational sport for me. It was an expression of love. And the more I loved the man, the more crazy passionate I would get. Like, you know, like movie sex. I mean, it was just fabulous. That's probably too much information, but I'm not a dud. But... <laughs> I need to be in love. So that makes it so difficult for me when I meet a man and we go out to dinner and we have a wonderful time and the kisses start and 
I, I don't feel anything because I'm not in love. You know, and they're looking at their watch like, you know, they only have two hours to live, so you better put out, right? <laughs> so I think whenever someone says, how did your date go? And, and I always say, well, then my date went great. And it always does go, go great. But I basically can see it in their eyes. And I, I remember one gentleman said after the fifth date, without any action, and he said to me, I honestly think that you would rather pick up your camera and film trees than go to bed with me. And you know, he was right. I'll give him that. He was right. If ever that day comes around If I get my feet on the ground I'd make Bonnie my wife and we'd rob this whole town. Maybe take all that money. I have to admit, after the dusting question, the number two question that I get lately is, who is Hal? Is Hal your boyfriend? Who is that man in your videos? Are you dating? What's going on with him? <laughs> one woman, one sweet woman wrote one week, are you settling because he seems kind of crabby towards you? Do you hear that, Hal? You're too crabby. Hal and I have been the Bickersons ever since we met. And Hal and I met in 1977. September it was. And I was 22 years old. And Hal is six years older than me. We have been fast friends from the day that we met. And Hal was very, very good friends with my husband, Ed. And later on in years, he became so very close to my husband, Bill. So we go way back. We have all the same friends. We have similar interests. And he, like I said, we're the Bickersons, but we have an awful lot of fun. And I trust him. He, he is a war veteran. He is the salt of the earth. His wife passed away. She was one of my very best friends, and Mary passed away in 2004 from cancer. He raised his beautiful daughter. He is an amazing man who will always do the right thing. So I get from so many of you that you like him and that you trust him around me and you like his jokes. And I think that's wonderful. I think that you kind of have picked up that vibe like, yeah, this is her dear friend. And, and I love that. And because Hal and I have, we've been like brother and sister, you know, for over 30 years, 40 years. <laughs> like, yeah, it's getting up there. I, I think, you know, well, maybe we would have dated and, and had a wonderful time if we, if we weren't so close. I, you know, I know some of you are rooting for Hal and I to get together. And, you know, you never say never. What's that beautiful song by Fiona Apple? Never is a promise. Yeah. Never say never. It is, it's rolling. <laughs> Cute. How come you don't have age spots on your hands? What's going on there? What are you using on your hands and your arms where you don't have age spots? <laughs> and I don't know. I can only conclude that whatever I use on my face, which is like four things, and I'll list them below, whatever I use on my face, I put on my hands. I think that probably the combination of Defran, vitamin C, uh, some of the creams that I use, I'm assuming that that's it, but I, I don't know. If I knew, I would tell you. And 
there are so many of you out there that are going to launch a YouTube channel. And you ask me all the time, is there anything bad about being on YouTube? Is there something I should know? When you have a channel, I think the best advice I could give anybody is get out of your own way. It's not all about you. It's about those beautiful subscribers that come back every week and share their life with you. And you reflect back who they are. But if you're starting a channel without passion, without something to say, I don't think you'll make it and I don't think you'll be happy. So what is the worst thing about having a YouTube channel? The worst thing for me about having my channel is reading hundreds and hundreds of messages under a video and not being able to answer every one of them. Not being able to say, thank you for sharing your life with me. I love you so much. I just read what you wrote about your husband, your mother, your daughter how you feel and you touch my heart so much and I'm sitting here crying and yet what do I do? I can heart it or I can say thank you. Love Susan and Desi. That hurts me. Maybe that's why people think I'm sad. It hurts me that I can't be more for you. I feel that sometimes you feel like you pour out your life and then you get a hey thanks Susan and Des. But somehow deep down, I guess I know, I know you know that I listen to you and I learn and I love you. I think you know that. Oh, look at these. Did I mention these earrings? Oh my goodness. I can't stop talking about these earrings. I just, I love them. See, they're red and they're cute. All right, I'll stop. last question I want to answer is kind of a cheat question because I've only had this question asked of me one time and it was yesterday <laughs> but I loved it so much and I want to answer it and I wish everybody would answer this question and I think it's from the movie The Way We Were. I've got to ask Peggy. Hey Peggy. <laughs> but the question was what was the favorite day of your life? Wow what a great question. The day that I married Bill, I, I was, my happiness I felt from my toes to the top of my head and I was just so happy and what a wonderful day. And then I thought the first time I ever faced an audience of over a thousand people, I'd, I'd won a radio contest and there I was and I had an eight piece band and I had never performed for more than 400 people. And, there was this crowd and it was so exciting and I was probably doomed to fail, but I didn't. It was such a victory and what a wonderful day that was. But, but no, that wasn't it. Without a doubt, my very favorite day was the day that I gave birth to my son, Chris. 1973, April 28th. And he was a big baby. He was 13 pounds. And they wheeled me in to my room. And I saw the sun coming through the window. And the nurse held my baby up. And I could, I could see him. And, and there was two dozen roses that my mother-in-law had sent me. And they were there already. So there was the beautiful blue sky and the sun and my baby and the roses. And this baby was my, my baby to keep, to raise, to hold. <laughs> that will always be the happiest day of my life. I lost my first baby baby was mine, oh, mine. how 
many smiles does it take to be happy? How many times do you have to feel lonely before you get the chance to meet someone? Before you get to meet someone like you? How many songs can you write about heartbreak? How to go on when you're fed up with mistakes? Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with me and Desi today. I loved every second of it. And if you get a chance, could you share down below what was your favorite day in your whole life? Oh, that would be like the best thing to share, especially now that it's Christmas. Please have yourself a wonderful, happy, safe, brand new week. And when you're done with that week, you come back and see me and Desi. Okay? All right. It's a deal. We'll be here. <laughs>